So here we are in Taipei, Taiwan. Um, OOPC has a team over here trying to bring up the next generation of EXO laptop. If we look at the, the motherboard that was used in the first generation EXO, one of the problems that we have is to obtain really cheap electronics. You need to be using the same chips that everyone else is. The memory chips that we used in the first generation and the flash chips that we used in the first generation are no longer available at, at a price efficient point. In order to use more efficient chips, we had to switch the chipset and the processor that was used in the XO1. So here you have an actual the the board of the XO 1.5. Yes, we we got these back from assembly about a week and three days ago, and at this point uh, most of the hardware has been verified to function. We're still working on bringing up the functions under open firmware. Um, we have a VIA processor and a, a mobile VIA chipset. We have DDR2 memory, um, a full gigabyte and we have flash storage um, available. We're looking at either four, which would be a single chip, or eight gigabytes of flash storage on this device. So you jump from one gigabyte to, to four or eight? Yes. And that is thanks to some... <laughs> that's, that's thanks to a change in the industry where they're putting more than one bit per cell. So effectively these are really two gigabyte chips but because they're using two bits per cell they appear as four gigabyte and with two of them we get eight gigabyte and that's basically the cheapest thing you can get right now is four gigs or yes, yes. that would be the most um, meaningful uh, capacity to, to use for the XO 1.5 it's the most cost effective yeah. yes it's it's a single chip of, of storage so the, the big the big story that went around like uh, 1.5 XO 1.5 now is using VIA VIA chip uh, instead of MD geode and so what is this new chip that VIA is bringing? It's so the the processor is well known it's a C7M which is available on a number of motherboards already the the new chip is the VX855 which um, is a combination of Northbridge and Southbridge on a single chip um, it provides us very low power and in addition improves greatly the graphics capabilities of what was available on Gen 1 and uh, uh, the, this, this VIA chip is not yet, I mean, this exact configuration is not yet in commercial laptops, but VIA right. is certainly planning to have it in a lot of places, right? Yes. Right now we're working with engineering samples of the chip. It has not yet hit mass production. Um, however, we are told that a very large number of uh, white box network, netbook manufacturers are looking to uh, start selling systems built yeah. on this over the next six months. So this might be the biggest alternative to the Intel Atom in the netbook market, perhaps, because right now this Certainly is not, the not really the only right now, right? Yes. I mean, for now, this basically just Intel doing all these netbooks, mostly? Right. Well, interesting thing about the, net, the Intel is their companionship is still a desktop system. Um, that will change in the next month as Intel introduces um, a new system and there will be a lot of netbooks introduced with it however they tend to go for a larger display and price up uh, just to explain for uh, people like me who don't really know exactly what the companion chip is supposed to do the, the companion chip is everything but the processor so the companion chip is the interface between the processor and the memory the companion chip also provides your graphics um, and through the south bridge, it provides the interface to all of the peripherals in the system. So your USB, IDE, SD, uh, networking, audio. And so, so will it have uh, basically the same software running, or uh, how much how much do you need to change on the on the software to make it work? I think Chris Paul should answer that question. Yeah. So let's make it. Let's make